Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today we're diving into the stochastic indicator and how you can use this oscillator in your day trading. Here's what we're going to cover in this video. Let's start by taking a look at the stochastic formula. The stochastic looks like this. It's a momentum oscillator indicator that shows whether an asset is overbought or oversold by comparing its closing price to its recent price range. It consists of two lines, percent %K in blue and percent %D in orange. It's a bounded indicator because its values range between 0 and 100. As for the formula, you can calculate percent %K with this equation, and percent %D is simply the three-period moving average of percent %K. N is the period, and it refers to the number of candles used for the calculation, and by default, it's set to 14. Okay, let's talk about the difference between the stochastic and the RSI. Here we've got the stochastic, and just below that, the RSI. They're both momentum oscillators, and they pretty much look the same. So what's the actual difference between them? First, the RSI measures price strength, while the stochastic looks at the price position in the recent range. Another difference lies in the overbought levels. For the stochastic, it's set at 80 while for the RSI, it's 70. The same goes for the oversold levels, 20 for the stochastic and 30 for the RSI. Finally, the stochastic oscillator has two lines, which can provide better and clearer signals. Let's move forward and see why it's considered one of the best reversal indicators. All right, to understand when these reversal signals actually happen, let's see an example. Here, we have a crossover between percent %K and percent %D in the overbought area, and we can see that a reversal follows shortly after. The same thing happens here. There is a crossover in the oversold area, marking the beginning of a bullish trend. Again, we have a reversal at this crossover as well, and at this one. So, as we can see, reversal signals are very precise. To clarify, for a long signal, you need to wait for percent %K to cross above percent %D, and it's very important that this crossover happens below the 20 level, meaning in the oversold area. On the other hand, for a short signal, you wait for percent %K to cross below percent %D, and this crossover must occur above the 80 level, which corresponds to the overbought area. It corresponds to reversal signals. Let's take a look at a stochastic strategy based solely on the indicator. Here's how the long setup works. First, the price is above the 200 EMA, which indicates a bullish trend. So we'll only be looking for long positions. Second, percent %K crosses above percent %D below the 20 level, which suggests that momentum is turning up. You then need to wait for percent %K to cross back above the 20 level. Once that happens, you can enter a long position at the candle close. For the stop loss, set it just below the recent swing low. And for the take profit, you can either target the last resistance level or use a 2 to 1 risk reward ratio. So here's an example. We've got the 200 EMA and the price is clearly below it. The stochastic is also in the overbought zone. Now let's see what happens. There's a crossover between percent %K and percent %D right here. But we need to wait for percent %K to drop back below the 80 line before jumping in. That happens right here so we can go for a short position at the candle close. We'll set the stop loss at the previous swing high, and for the take profit, we can either go for a 2 to 1 risk reward ratio at this level, or aim for the previous support level, right here. Let's see how it plays out. Our TP is successfully reached. Let's now discuss a very powerful strategy called the pullback strategy. It's a strategy that includes price action. In fact, for high probability trading, it's important to combine the stochastic oscillator with price action elements like support and resistance levels, trend lines, moving averages, Fibonacci levels, and so on. Right here you've got the trade setup of this strategy. The pullback strategy uses the stochastic as a confirmation tool. Price action helps make sure that a reversal is actually coming. All right. For example, according to our setup, here we have the 50 SMA, and we see that the price is above it. We were in a strong uptrend, and a pullback has just occurred. Looking closer, we can see that the price bounced off a previous resistance level, 
where it had been rejected several times before. Plus, using the Fibonacci retracement, we see that the price is around the 0.5 level. Now, if we check the stochastic, we can spot a crossover between percent %K and percent %D in the oversold area, suggesting that a reversal might happen soon. And on top of that, this candle is a hammer, which is a reversal pattern. So we can open a long position at the high of the candle, place our stop loss below the support level, and exit the trade when the price crosses back below the 50 SMA. Let's see what happens. Price rises sharply, and it crosses back the 50 SMA here. So we exit the position at that point. It's a very clean trade setup. Finally, let's look at the power of divergence. A divergence occurs when the price moves in one direction, but the stochastic moves in the opposite direction, signaling a potential reversal. In this image, we can see that the price is in a bearish trend, while the stochastic is in a bullish trend, creating a bullish divergence. One important thing to note with this strategy is that only bullish divergences are tradable. So in this example, the price is making lower lows, which means we're in a downtrend. But if you look at the stochastic, it's doing the opposite. It's making higher lows, showing a bit of bullish strength. This kind of mismatch between price and indicator is called a divergence, and it usually signals a strong bullish move. And as we can see, the price shoots up right after it. Okay guys, it's the end of the video. I hope you learned valuable stuff and see you soon for the next one.